Hello everyone, this is Take from BigHeadTalk.com and welcome to my studio. I'm here to do my shooting review of the Fujifilm X-T30. I've had it for a couple of months, I've had a chance to basically use this as my everyday camera and there was one trip I was going to take it with me which was down to San Clemente, California for a uh, conference that I was going to but in the end I ended up taking the x T3 and I think that pretty much sums up my thoughts on the X-T30 which is it is a great camera it uses the same sensor and the same processor that's in the X-T3 and anything that isn't in here that's in here is either it's a physical thing like dual card slot the ability to take uh, a battery grip having way more input outputs in here including a um, 3.5 millimeter headphone as well as microphone inputs here. Other than those things, everything else in terms of video features and sort of shooting features, if it's not in here, it's because it's just a smaller body and it just isn't able to handle a lot of the, the thermal uh, cooling issue. So a lot of the video features that this is limited by, it just has to do with the fact that it's a smaller body. But on that trip down to California, uh, it was for work and I had to make sure that everything would work out perfectly and with the X-T3 having the dual card slot really help because often in one card slot I'll have stills, the other card slot I'll have video and on things that are very critical I'll make sure that they're mirrored and uh, that just is not possible with this. As well I knew I would often be on a tripod for some of my work or have something connected to the bottom and I won't have easy access to the battery and the memory card. And the memory card is a big thing because right now I'm shooting this video on the X-H1 and when I need to pull the video card out, to take a look what's in it, I don't need to take it off the tripod and take it, take the uh, tripod head plate off. And this one, I do have to. And so, for those of you that are thinking of buying the XC3, I think the biggest question is, are your hands big? And if they are, then you probably won't like this. Um, the position of the Q button, I constantly hit it by accident. So much so that I actually want to be able to disable the Q button and have it as something else like an AEL or AFL button and then reconfiguring some of these other buttons to do that instead. And as well, using the front button to push in to switch between shutter speed and ISO so you don't have to use any of the custom uh, function buttons to do that. I still found it a little bit clunky because as you're pressing this in, sometimes you're pressing the back focus button at the same time and so that often kind of conflicted as well some won't like the fact that this does not have a d-pad now it just has a joystick i like the joystick i like navigating with the joystick you just push in for enter and then you just go up and down but you don't you do lose those four custom functions that you typically will have when you do have a d-pad and the xd3 and the xh1 both have both the um, d-pad as well as uh, the joystick, so that's great that you have a choice. I understand why the X-T30 chose one or the other because the X-T20, one of the biggest complaints was no thumb real estate, right? And just no, no, look at the space between this thumb grip and your LCD screen. It is, it's so tight in there, right there, and the D-pad kind of pretty much took up most of the bottom half, so they felt this would make it a bit better, and it has made it a little better, but I still feel that by pulling the screen out, now like my thumb, see how my thumb is I guess? This is kind of, it feels natural to me. So it still feels tiny, it still feels small. The time that I had this was in the winter, I had gloves on and this is not a great camera to shoot with gloves on. The X-T3, no problem. You can shoot with gloves on and there's lots of thumb real estate. So even between the X-E3 and the X-T30, I found that the X-E3 still had a lot more room because it's slightly lower than the X-T30 but it's wider and because the screen isn't articulating there's just a lot more room in here and shooting all day with the X-T3 felt much better. In terms of the viewfinder, magnification is kind of small and the eye cup just isn't that great compared again to the X-T3. So those are the compromises you're making to have a such a powerful camera powerful processor, quad-core processor, and the X-Trans, the new, uh, the backside illuminated uh, sensor in here, 24, uh, 26 megapixels. Having all that in such a compact size uh, compared to the X-T3, there are going to be some compromises. So if you're doing it for the sake of the money, like you're saving $500 currently right now, then that's great. You're saving $500, there's a lens. But if you can choose between the two, I would say 
depending on what you're coming from, for instance, uh, I've had people that have shot with the Sony A6000 series, the mirrorless series, and they felt that the, the X-T3 was tiny versus someone who's coming from a digital, uh, like a DSLR, playing with the X-T3, they're like, wow, this is small. And to them, this seems minuscule and almost unusable to them. So it really comes down to you. I have large hands for my stature, but I have thin fingers, so I can kind of get away with shooting with this. Personally, I'm not a fan of the, the ergonomics and size of this. I've always preferred the XE series, the XE2, the XE3, and now whatever the XE4, the XE3S, whatever they're gonna call it. I think I, I would still prefer it. Both the XE3 and the XT30, I don't like, again, the smaller EVF once you get used to the larger EVF. But again, depending what you're coming from, if you're coming from an XT20 or even an XT10, this is a huge leap, especially when it comes to uh, eye and uh, face tracking. This is just, just great. Even if you're not, like I did a vlogging test to show you how well this can keep focused, but even if you're just doing stills and you're just following kids running around, this is, from what I remember when I've been shooting, when I tested the, the, the Sonys, this is as good as the Sony, or you know, like Sony's just slightly better, but Fujifilm is really, really up their game with the eye, focus, face, uh, eye track, face track, as well as just focus tracking, in, in, you know, improved over the X-T3 at this time. And so for autofocus, this camera is great. And for the price point that's in, currently right now at $899, and then when you bundle it with the lens, uh, you're getting a smoking deal. And the, this, uh, this, this uh, gray, charcoal gray color is beautiful. When people see it, they're like, wow, what, 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 cam what film camera is that? This is kind of my old, uh, uh, Minolta film camera, uh, mechanical film camera, and the size of this uh, X-T3 does remind me of the older manual focus SLRs of the 1980s. That's kind of the size that it is. I even took a couple of uh, uh, photos of, of uh, the X-T30. It's sort of that size, except, of course, in the film days, you just needed the shutter button, shutter speed dial, and you needed your shutter cock here. And with the digital camera, you need a lot more, including space for this articulating screen. In fact, I would have even given up for a smaller screen just to give you a little bit more thumb real estate. Fujifilm will not change the size of this. Um, a lot of people complain saying, why didn't they put a fully articulating screen that folds out just like the X-T100? I talked to Billy, he said that this was an award-winning design and Fujifilm was not willing to make this camera wider just to, uh, just to accommodate a fully front articulating screen. And even for me, um, when it folds out sideways, it becomes a very wide camera. And sure, maybe for vloggers and bloggers, they uh, they might like it. But you know, this is not just for, for vloggers. There aren't a lot of vloggers out there. Uh, fully articulating upwards, the EVF would have gotten away. So, you know, other brands of Canon have flipped downwards to try to accommodate that, to keep everything compact. So I'm kind of torn between having a front articulating on a compact body like this. Um, in the end, I guess it would have sold better, I think, if it did fold outwards this way. So maybe we'll see that eventually in the X-T40. But uh, that's my long-term review. I, just great photos, carrying around all day. I enjoyed it. Maybe I would have enjoyed it more in the summer if I didn't have to wear gloves and it wasn't so cold. But in the winter, it was a little bit clunky. I had to pull my gloves off uh, to shoot with it. Again, the Q button is my biggest complaint where it is. It just, I constantly am hitting that by accident. But in terms of IQ, cannot complain. Beautiful IQ, focus is always spot on. Video was great. I mean, everything about this camera, having a pop-up flash so you don't need to carry uh, a, a, a separate flash. If you're kind of using this like a, a day point shoot, you put a pancake on here and you're out shooting, you just want the camera to disappear, right? You don't want to think about you carrying something big and heavy. This is a great backup to the X-T3 if you wanted a compact alternative. The shoot's very similar to the X-T3. But for me, I would say, XE3 for something compact or the XE series and then for uh, the pro bodies go with the XT3 and this thing here is just like a little pocket rocket that's just the right tool for the right person. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, don't forget to leave a comment as well as if you have any questions but please keep it civil. So thanks again and we'll talk to you soon. Happy shooting.